Hey folks, welcome to the second video in the inventory management app using Google App Sheet. In this video, we're going to be uh, carrying forward what we did in the previous video. In the previous video, we set up the inventory management app and we also made our first sale in the app. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the total in inventory for each product and uh, we'll be also seeing how to display the items as soon as they need to be restocked or they have reached the restock level. And we'll be using some Google, uh, some formulas and slices in Google App Sheet. So let's get started. So I'm just going to go back to my app here and here you can see in the previous video, we did we created our inventory app here and we have added the products and we sorted it and stuff like that. Now I'm just going to go click on new table. I'm going to be clicking on the restock table here. So I'm going to just do add restock and you can just, just go ahead and just click on add this table and the table will get added to the app in a few seconds. So now that, now that we have added the app, the next thing that we're going to be doing is adding it to the view, right? So we're going to go to UX. I'm going to go click on new new view maybe i'm going to name this as maybe add stock i'm going to name this as add stock and the sheet that i'm going to be using is going to be restock right and uh, nothing else i'm not going to be doing i'm not going to be touching anything else i'm just going to go ahead and click on save right so now that we have added the table to the app now we're going to be calculating the current inventory for each product right so below each product i want to display the current inventory that is available at the store so that the manager of the app can look that look under each product that there is some inventory that is there in the stock so we're just going to go i'm going to go to my data i'm going to go i'm going to go into inventory i'm going to go towards columns and here we're going to be creating a virtual column so just click on add virtual column here and the new one i'm just going to call this as, as say current stock right the app formula so I'm going to be putting a formula in the description. You just need to go ahead and just copy that, right? And um, this is the formula that I'm going to be using. So here first we started out with a sum formula, right? And it's going to be select, it's going to be selecting. So from the inventory sheet, right? From the inventory sheet, I want the initial stock. So that's going to be initial stock, right? And then we're going to be doing product barcode right for each product is going to be selecting the initial stock and the product barcode right and it's going to be adding it with and it's going to do another sum is going to select in the restock right it's going to be checking there and it's going to be getting the product barcode and it's going to be giving us the current stock that is available right it's going to go ahead and click on save going to click on done go ahead and click on save here So now our aim is whenever I go to the add stock and I click on the product and I select it and if I add the stocks here, right? So I want to see that the number increases here, right? So we're going to be just doing, we're going to try it out once, right? But before that, whenever it goes, I want them to select it. I want it to be a multiple choice question so that the manager of the app doesn't have to manually sit and like search for the product, right? So we're going to go to data. I'm going to go to restock. That's this one. And we're going to go to columns. We're going to go to the product barcode, right? And oops, we need to go to restock and I'm going to go to product barcode. And here I wanted to do a reference, right? So it's going to be ref and I'm going to go to inventory, right? So if you remember in the previous video, we had done the same thing for sales, right? So you need to make sure that the product barcode, that's the name of the column is the same. There's no spaces. There's nothing different. So it can exactly get those barcodes into this reference. I'm going to click on done. I'm going to go ahead and click on save here. Right. So now we're going to be checking if our formula works, right? So you can see there are 50 onions here, right? The stock current stock is 50, right? So if I go to add stock, I click on the plus button. And I'm going to select say onions, right? And I'm going to be adding say 20 to it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead, click on save. Just going to refresh this. Right. I'm going to go back to my inventory. And now you can see we added the initial stock value was 50, but we added 20 to it, which results to 70. So our formula to get the current stock has successfully worked, right? So now we're going to be covering one last thing that is very important for this video. And I think it's going to be the highlight of this video, according to me, 
So it's going to be displaying the restock needed for each product. So if now if I go back here, I can see onions, right? The restock level is 40, which means if this 70 number, it goes under 40 or is equal to 40. I want to give it a notification saying restock is needed or I, I will create another view where you can see all the products that require restocking. So uh, we're going to go to data, I'm going to go to slices here. I'm going to create a new slice and I'm going to be renaming this as restock needed. All right. And inventory, the source table for this one is going to be the inventory, right? It's going to be getting all this, whatever is present in that sheet, right? Then we need to add the um, row conditional value, right? It's going to go write a custom function, right? This, this is just a description in your know, own words to give you a reference of what it's doing exactly, right? So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to go to columns here and the current stock, right? So I, if the current stock is less than or equal to the restock level, I want it to display it, right? So uh, instead of typing and just click on insert here, right? And then I want it to be, if it is less than equal to the restock level. So it's going to be this column right here, restock level is less than or equal to, it's going to do something, right? So just go click save here. There's nothing else. You don't need to do anything else here. Just go ahead and click on save. Right. So we have added the slice, right? So, but we need to add it to a view, right? So I'm going to create a new view here. I'm going to name it. I think I'm just going to name it as the restock. Oops, restock needed, right? And I'm going to go to inventory and you can see there's a restock needed slice that is there. So you can just click on that. And I'm just, just going to go ahead and click on save here. Maybe here you can just change the display of it, right? It's 456 here, yeah, but it should not be that, right? I'm just going to go click on card here. And I'm going to make it to a list form. The title I want it to be as the name of the product. The subtitle maybe can be the current stock, right? Since we have used the formula, right? I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And now we're just going to check whether the stock matches, right? So pulses, so the current thing, we are in the restock needed view, right? So th here in this view, all the products that have that are under the restock value are going to be getting listed here, right? So it's going to be restock needed. So you can see pulses. If I go to my sheet, you can see pulses 60, right? But the restock level is 70. Hence it is showing it to me here. So if I go here and I do a add stock, right? and I select pulses. Okay. So the limit, so currently we have 60 and the restock level is 70. So if I just say I put a hundred, okay, I put hundred more new packets of pulses. I'm going to go click on save, going to refresh this. Right. And now if I go to restocks needed, you can see that the pulses has gone out. So our, both our formulas work that is getting the current stock and the slice that we used has successfully worked. So this is all for this video. I hope you have understood how to create an inventory management app using Google app sheet. This is the end of the Google app sheet tutorial series. I hope this tutorial series has helped you. I'll be leaving the sheet link in the description and I'll be putting the formula also in the description. You can check that out. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, share and for more content, hit the subscribe button. I will see you in the next one.